Hi, my name is Rich Bowen, and today I'm speaking with Clint Savage, who works on the Lynchpin project. This is a project that I'm not terribly familiar with myself, so we're going to count on Clint to fill us in here. <laughs> Thanks for speaking with me today. Thanks for having me. Could you give us a brief overview of what Lynchpin does? Uh, sure. Lynchpin is uh, basically a cloud provisioner. So the idea is that you can set up a simple little YAML script um, or file and define exactly what you want. It's very declarative. And so you can say, I want three images or three instances on Amazon, say on Amazon Web Services, and I want them from this type of image. And you can turn on Lynchpin, say Lynchpin up and it will actually enable those three instances. And then when you're done using it in whatever way you'd like, you can destroy it as well. And it keeps track of, of the information that uh, you provision with bringing these instances up and then tears them down um, in a similar way. It makes it easy for you to do uh, quick uh, provisioning or quick uh, access to machines wherever you'd like them across the, uh, across the cloud. So this sounds like something that would be really great um, working alongside, say, Ansible or, or Puppet or something like that. Sure. In fact, it's um, it, internally, we actually use Ansible uh, playbooks and roles. Uh, we actually spend a lot of time digging in and running Ansible uh, modules. So we run the Ansible AWS module. We use the Ansible LiveVert module. We support several other providers as well. And also um, any that you want to write yourself, we, you, we can help you uh, support those as well. I'm actually wearing my uh, Manage IQ t-shirt today, and uh, I'm, I'm curious <laughs> how Lynchpin compares to Manage IQ. They, it sounds, you know, with your description, it sounds like they fill kind of similar, maybe overlapping roles, but, but different. They do to some extent. Um, Manage IQ is, is very much an orchestrator, and it does a lot more, uh, you know, day-to-day -day type management of your, your systems when you have them on the cloud. And you can actually look at things like probably, I don't know a ton about Manage IQ, but I, I'm guessing you can do things like uh, setting up uh, proxies and other things to get things going on those machines and, and clustering them and things like that. And Lynchpin isn't really built to do that. Really, the goal of Lynchpin is to be able to get up something quickly um, mm -hmm. and then test your environment in the way that you want to with whatever whatever scripts you have after it's up and running. So say yeah. it, the main purpose of what we've written it for is for continuous integration. So you basically spin up three nodes or six nodes or 10 nodes or however many nodes, and they can all be different types. We AWS, Google Cloud, they could be Libvirt, they can be uh, some others that we have as well. Um, I think we have ones for Rackspace, OpenStack, uh, all sorts of different types of in, uh, infrastructures. And you set those up and then you provision them the way you want them. You run, say, another Ansible script against it. We provide you an inventory and you can do whatever configuration you want, test it, and then you tear it down. And that's the main pur purpose of it. But it's been able to kind of grow outside of that a bit where people use it to provision and manage the system you know, in a way where they just have a script that they run against it once it's up and running, like an Ansible playbook or something, and it will provision that or Puppet, you know, uh, will also work against it or any things like that. And so it's really flexible in that way where you can just get up something running and really quickly do it. With Manage IQ or any of the other more provisioners that do um, orchestration, mm -hmm. uh, Lynchpin doesn't keep track of the state. So that's one of the big differences I would say is that we don't keep track of the state of the systems. We just record it locally, whether it's been provisioned or not, and then try to tear okay. it down. Does that help? Now what, yeah, that it, it definitely feels like both of them could be useful in an environment. Um, mm -hmm. That manage IQ is more like a, a GUI management interface. Right. Um, whereas this sounds like it's more geared towards automation. And so, yeah, that sounds really, really useful. Um, what uh, do you have some examples of, of uh, organizations that are using this in in their environments? Um, yeah, the sort sure. of things they might be doing. Sure, um, I can. I do. Uh, so internally inside Red Hat, we use it um, for provisioning and testing all of the uh, the modularity stuff that's coming out in Factory 2.0. We're working towards getting that provisioning piece inside of that. So it's a really small part of what the modularity is, and, and Red Hat uses modularity, but additionally, Fedora is using modularity externally right now, and that's something that 
we're trying to build a modular operating system. We've talked a little bit about it in Fedora. And the benefit of that is if you think about how many, how many things you have to test when you're doing provisioning or doing um, things like that at scale, because you've got, you know, each different component has a container, has a module, there's multiple modules, there's multiple RPMs that are in a module and container. There's so many things there that if you can't provision things and tear them down in reasonable, quick, reasonably quick ways, you're going to be uh, kind of out, like using up resources you don't necessarily need to use. So in this case, we can provision things and leave them run, run, running for a long time and test a whole bunch of things, or we can provision a bunch of little nodes and then tear them down really quickly and reprovision them and use, use those resources for something else. So Fedora has been using it pretty well. Red Hat's using it. We have a couple other people that have in, uh, expressed interest, um, specifically one called um, programmer.com. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked to the Linode people once uh, a while back and they seemed interested. I haven't seen anything from them yet. but I, And then I have other uh, groups like OpenStack, um, specifically on the Zool project, is looking at their yeah. node pool and using Lynchpin to um, run provisioning inside of there. We have yet okay. to actually get the design working there, but we're working on talking to them and um, and then root most recently, um, the CentOS project reached out when we released 1.5, which is about the release we're at right now. Turning that question around the other way, um, who would you like to be using this project? And, and, you know, related to that, who would you like to, to have come to the community to work with you and bring their, their experience and trouble set and whatever? Yeah. Um, one of the, one of the use uh, cases that I can see that I really, really like um, to be able to use is kind of how when Jenkins is doing things or one of the CI groups like Travis would be a good example also, where we could provision um, their cluster for them and make it easy for them to tear, bring things up and tear them down. A lot of times now, there are, a lot of people are going to containers, which we can support that also. But um, in terms of physical machines, there's always those tests that need a physical machine. And I can see like CI environments, um, there's what the QA cloud, there's a whole bunch of these people, like these sorts of people I can see being very, this tool being very useful for them for testing their environments in uh, large ways. Um, one I haven't mentioned that kind of fits in this too is Beaker. Um, mm -hmm. Like the Beaker project does a bunch of provisioning, we support it. Um, and they have a Beaker in, the, in a box test that I think would be really useful for uh, people to test their all their different clustering or different, uh, excuse me, not clustering, di different VMs or different hardware that they're going to be testing um, out there as well. So I think I think CI environments, like like I said, Travis, um, Jenkins, Zool, all those people, I think are really the key focus we're after. And we still have a lot of people out there that we haven't even talked to. But there are so many others that we could easily, like so somebody who wants to, like some tinkerer, we could totally use this and just provision yeah. stuff and set up a, a simple firewall or or a simple web server and and have a back end and have three nodes like in two seconds it would be no work at all really and i think there's some real value in that too so for those of you watching the video of course i've linked to the project site and the documentation down in the description if somebody wants to get involved with the project uh is do you have a irc channel mailing list what's your your uh primary means of communication we sure do. We actually have um, an IRC channel. We have a mailing list, um, and we also have a, uh, a GitHub website that we've been using. So that's um, UCR Read the Docs, which is uh, linchpin.readthedocs.io, and then we have uh, github.com. And um, I assume that you'll link this one in here because it's kind of a long name, but it's CentOS Paz Sig. If you search for that on there, yeah. that's where Linchpin lives, is in the CentOS environment. So okay, it's great. the yeah the uh, service that we have there. And then uh, we also have IRC on, on free node. We do pound linchpin, which uh, um, I tend to spend a fair, fair amount of time there. And then our mailing list, which is linchpin at redhat.com. Um, so if you're interested in mailing us there, uh, you can sign up to our, our mailing list as well. Just search for linchpin mailing list and it'll come up too on Google. So yeah, those are our basic ways to contact us. GitHub issues are great. So that always gets people involved. Um, we're always looking for contributors and people who are just interested in using the project. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Thank you. This was fun.